Hey there everyone, it's uh, Ed here from Bunch of Swines again. I uh, hope you've been doing well. Uh, so today we are in the new barbecue barn. So um, it doesn't look like much at the moment. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done, but um, yeah, this is gonna become our kind of like, you know, kitchen and, and, and home for, for these types of videos. Uh, coming up so uh yeah we've got a bit of work to do but you know i figured seeing as the weather's not great uh here in the uk at the minute it would be a good chance to uh, actually you know use the barn you know it's what it's uh, what it's here for um before it gets basically filled up with all of our barbecue stuff and trailers and all kinds of stuff so today what we're going to be cooking is a, a another brisket. Uh, we're actually going to be cooking a, a grass-fed uh, UK brisket. So um, these, this one, we've actually got from a, you know from a good supplier. Uh, you know the the looks of the marbling on their other cuts looks fantastic. So you know I thought you know let's actually cook one of the briskets, see how it stands up. Um, you know I would say that you know normally I do cook a, a grain-fed brisket, um, but you know, let, let's see if, uh, you know, if, if a high quality UK brisket can still give us a, a good, a good result at the end. That's the, the main thing. So, um, we've already trimmed this up. We're going to cook this like we would a competition brisket. So, uh, I've actually already trimmed it. Um, I, you know, which we'll, we'll cover off in a minute. We'll go to go and see how we did that. Okay. With this, uh, English brisket, you know, you can see here, um, you know, if you guys have watched a lot of, uh, American barbecue videos on brisket trimming uh, it won't look anything like this so basically when this has been cut uh, they've left uh, a lot of the uh, additional fat and meat so actually we've got some beef rib meat in here as well so um, I'm going to trim this down you know I'm going to get this out of the packaging we're going to trim it down we're going to see what the marbling is like I mean on the bits that in a sense, I'm probably not going to be cooking. Uh, the marbling looks great. Uh, I've got this nice big yellow fat wedge, which you don't normally see that often on a on an English brisket. So um, let's get this out of the out of the packaging, uh, and then we can see a bit more of what we're working with. So, I mean, I'm just looking at this on the, on the fat side. Um, and, you know, I can see down here, so this is looking into the flat. You know, I have got some quite nice marbling that I can see already, you know, which for an English brisket is, is you know, it's quite a, a welcome sight. Um, you know, as I just pull this down, I'm just trying to pull it apart in a sense, just to start pulling this fat seam out. Uh, so I can expose the the meat side uh, a bit better, you know. And you see, you know, it kind of just pulls quite nicely like that. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of trimming that I'm going to have to do to this uh, to actually separate it out, so I actually have a, you know, a, a proper brisket. But I mean, a lot of this stuff that I'm going to trim off. I mean, some of it's going to be fat. Um, but yeah, there's also going to be some decent meat in here, which again, you yeah, know, we'll save for, uh, for grinding up into, you know, into mints later on. So, uh, I'm just trying to be very careful though. I obviously don't want to, don't want to put a gouge into the flat. So just trying to pull this, you know, naturally following the seam of the, of the meat. So. just following the the natural separation of it see here we've got a bit that's still hooked on yeah separating it a bit better now so 
So it might look like I am taking away a, you know, quite a lot, and I am, uh, to be honest. It's, um, but, you know, when I, I bought this brisket, so, um, yeah, they only charged me for, I think, something like seven kilos of it, uh, whereas the brisket that they've actually shipped uh, was little, you know, just over nine kilos. So, you know, they, they, they're doing a nice job and, you know, a nice thing in sort of actually factoring in what uh, additional weight I'll sort of lose. So, um, you know, in the, the actual meat cost, which is, you know, which is a pretty good thing for them to do. So, there you go. It's quite nearly there, getting this main fat cap off. There we go. So, you know, I've got all of that there. So, you know, that's uh, basically comes off of the, the short rib. Uh, so it's really good quality meat. I'm definitely gonna be saving that. Uh, I'll put that to one side. Um, now I've actually got the brisket exposed. Um, you know, I've just got a big layer of silver skin. Uh, which obviously I'm not going to, you know, still got quite a bit of fat on it, which obviously I'm not going to want. So uh, I'm going to start trimming this off as well uh, so we can start getting down to the meat and see see what this marbling is like. You know, how, is, how do these uh, sort of dairy cow briskets look like um, before, you know, and we'll, we'll trim this up exactly how we would um, for a, a contest and... Yeah, you know, I'm going to inject it and everything else like that. So uh, bear with me. This is going to take a, a little bit of time. Uh, obviously, I don't want to. As we're trimming it here, we're basically just you know sliding the knife underneath the uh, the silver skin and the fat, and just trying to take all of this off. Uh, you know, I'm looking here. This bit's a, a bit thin. It'll burn up in the cooking, so I'll cut that off. Um, everything I'm cutting off. You know, any bits of meat, uh, it is all going into my, you know, my grinding pile, stuff that I will uh, chop down and uh, basically grind into, into mince to use for, for other things. Um, you know, I know that, yes, I am taking a, a lot of meat off of this uh, brisket. You know, I'm basically just looking to cook the, the prime section of it. So, you know, a lot of the sides and the thinner bits will get taken off. But... You know, just working my way around it, you know, taking these um, hard bits of fat off of it, you know, things that aren't going to cook up nicely. Um, and, you know, as I start exposing it more, you know, trying to see see what it's looking like, you know, start shaping it to be more like a, a regular brisket that I might get if I was buying a, you know, a, a normal grain fed one, you know, a, a pack of brisket. So uh, just taking, again, more of this big fat wedge off, again, you know, stuff that's not going to render down. Um, I am actually going to, to separate the point and the flat here as well. Um, so, you know, I've just got to go pretty carefully with it. You know, trying to separate the, the point and the flat off of this brisket. You know, there's not a deep fat seam between the... Uh, the point and the flat so it's you know it's a bit more difficult to see it I've just got to be a bit careful you know, as I'm working my knife around it just to you know just to separate it out make sure that I'm not gouging the the back of the flat as it were you know as I just keep you know slowly working it off um, you know again just trimming it down making my the, the shape that I want uh, and, and also just being able to see uh, exactly what, what I've got there. So, you know, trimming it down slowly there. You know, and, and again, just, you know, keep on working it piece by piece, um, you know, as I get it separated out now. And, you know, as I've pretty much got most of the flat off there, uh, I'm now just going to basically just cut across that. Yeah, and there we go. Okay, so... So we can see here that we've got a, a little bit of a a slash here. So, I mean, that's fine. I wouldn't normally cook this far down on a brisket anyway. So, you know, I can just take that off. Uh, it does give me a chance to sort of look at the meat 
and sort of see what the marbling's like running through it. So uh, obviously that just goes on the grinding pile. And then again, I'm just going to get this squared up a bit so I can get that onto, onto my cooker nicely. Yeah, we're going to be cooking this on a gateway drum. So, yeah, I've got a bit of limited cooking space. Um, so I'm just going to, yeah, and also it just helps with the, the ease of the trimming if I just take this big fat wedge off of the edge there. So, uh, again, that just goes into the grinding pile. Um, just going to smooth off the the toe of the brisket like that. Um, so there we go. I mean, this is very, very rough. I mean, we're going to spend a lot more time getting this all cleaned up. Um, you know, get, making sure that all of this silver skin is removed and shaping it. So uh, we're going to do that, and then we'll come back to this in a minute. Yeah, we'll be back in a minute when we're looking to season it. Yeah, just stop it. So now that we've got our brisket all trimmed up, um, I am going to treat this like I would a, a competition brisket. So, um, you know, it's easiest for me to compare it against competition brisket because I, I know those the best because uh, obviously I cook those um, week in, week out. Um, so this does mean, yes, I am going to inject it. Uh, you know, going to add it, you know, my normal injection sort of enhances that beefy flavour within it. Um, the marbling on it, you know, whilst it doesn't necessarily look that marbled or you know it wouldn't look as marbled as you know say like an a9 or an srf uh that we might cook in the states um the marbling is a little bit different on this so you know it kind of looks to be sitting a bit under the surface so uh i, I mean i'm going to keep an open mind on this um you know see see how it goes but you know i'm just going to inject it like i normally would uh and then you know we'll, we'll get it ready for for the night so we can uh, start nice and early tomorrow morning So there we go, I mean, nice and easy. It doesn't take much to inject a brisket. Uh, I'm just gonna inject the point as well, just so, you know, we get a bit of flavor into that as well. So, that's it. They're just going to chill out for a bit. Yeah, we'll put some rub on these and we'll look at them again in tomorrow. Um, we just, you know, we've pretty much got the, the gateway up to temperature. So we're just going to put a little bit of wood on it, um, put the brisket on and, uh, and, and get cooking. So now, you know, our brisket's been on for a little bit. It's now, you know, we're going to get it wrapped up. Uh, you can see I've got a nice bark formed up on this point already. So uh, we're just going to wrap the point uh, with a, a little bit of beef stock and a few other things in there. Uh, you know, again, like we would for a, a contest. Um, that'd be enough. Yeah, and now we're just going to put a couple of sheets of tin foil on top just to seal it in. You know, keep it nice and you know, basically allow it to tenderize inside the the foil, um, you know, and, and get nice and, and buttery, like 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 basically you you expect with a, a burnt end. So, yeah, we're gonna just make our little pasty. sealing it up nice and tight and then we can just put that back on the cooker and get the uh the flat up so now it's time to to wrap our uh flat 
So yeah, you can see, yeah, we've got a nice bark on it. I don't want to take it too far because uh, I don't want to dry out the meat. So yeah, we're just gonna add in some more juice into the foil so this can braise nicely as we cook it. Uh, yeah, as we basically get it get it nice and tender. Yeah, we're basically doing exactly the same as what we did with the uh, the, the point. So just making sure that we get it nice and tight, get all of the air out of it as much as we can, but also making sure that we don't spill any of the juice that we've got in there. And then that's it, nice and tight, you know, just like a big pasty uh, and ready to go back onto the, the cooker. Uh, I need to, no. So the brisket is ready, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's cooked. You know, I've checked it for tenderness. Uh, I haven't actually looked at what the temperature it's reading. Um, I just purely go by feel, but I just want to get the, um, the meat off the cooker so it can kind of sit there and vent, uh, just so we can sort of see what it's doing. Um, so, you know, we can just sort of see how it, you know, basically, I just want to stop it from cooking any further. You know, if I press it, it's really tender. Okay, so these are fine. These are perfect. Um, I'm just going to put them to the side with the, the foil open. I'm going to let that vent for about five minutes, uh, just so the the tin uh, the bark can reharden, uh, and also I'm going to get the the flat off as well. So. So again, we're just going to. going to open this up trying not to spill too much of the juice um, oh. there we go I mean that, that that's that's perfect you know I can see I've got a you know, a little bit, of, it's nice and tender. Um, the bark, you know, it, it's a, it, this will reharden and will go darker as we let it rest. So as I'm letting it vent, basically the steam that you can see coming out is basically coming out of the rub. So it's actually getting that liquid to come out of it. Um, you know, this is gonna reharden up nicely. Um, and then we can actually slice into this and see, you know, how has this English brisket um, come, you know, how is it cooked? How well does it compare to, you know, to what we normally cook? And, you know, what, what are the differences that I can see in it? So um, I'm going to leave this here for a couple of minutes. Uh, then we'll wrap it up. We'll probably let it rest then after this for another, I don't know, half an hour, 20, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes uh, before we go to slice into it. Um, but yeah, looking good so far. Right, now that our burnt ends have had a, a you know, our brisket's had a, a chance to rest, uh, I'm just gonna get the, uh, the point out first. You know, I'm gonna cube this up. Um, I'm just gonna get this onto the, the cutting board. Uh, so, you know, it's still nice and tender, which is all good. Uh, I have got a bit of this fat cap on the back, so rather than worry about that afterwards, I'll just uh, slice most of that off now. You know, just take it off. Just like that. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna glaze these up and uh, put them in a foil pan and we just chuck them on the, the smoker. Just to, you know, these are, these are fully cooked, they're perfectly cooked. Uh, all I wanna do is just set the glaze. So we just, uh, they'll just go on for about 10 or 15 minutes. So um, there we go, now I've got that fat, excess fat off. Uh, I'm just gonna start slicing into to the point. So. Just like that, really tender. 
I mean, it looks really juicy to be fair. Um, so, just like that, and then last one. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm just gonna cube this up. So uh, I'm just gonna straight down like that. So we've got our nice little super tender, really rich beef cubes just like that so you know i'm just going to pick one out from the middle just have a look at it so you know you can see i mean you can see it, it is juicy you know it is uh, really tender uh we've got a nice little smoke ring on there as well so uh, and it smells it smells good it smells beefy so you know for a, a uk grass-fed brisket I, I mean so far it looks pretty good and considering the the point itself didn't really look that marbled um I'm kind of impressed, so I'll be really interested to have a look at what the, you know, have a look at what the uh, the rest of it, you know, what the flat looks like. But you know, it all looks good so far. So I'm just going to get these in this uh, in this tray, uh, pour a little bit of sauce on it, toss it around, uh, and then we're just going to throw these on the on the smoker. Okay, just like that. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of sauce like that. I'm just going to mix that through. Just like that. And then I'm just going to put these back on the drum quickly. So whilst we've got that, um, you yeah, know, the glaze setting on our, on our burn tens, uh, what I want to do now is just actually get the, the flat out. Uh, you yeah, know, this is obviously where it, you know, the difficult part. So, you know, how is this really dry or, you know, is it nice and juicy? You know, I mean, UK briskets normally have a tendency to, to be a bit drier um, because of, uh, you know, less marbling that you can normally see. So uh, I've just got a, my brisket out there. I'm just going to flip it over quickly so I can take this uh, fat off the back of it. You know, I'm not going to eat it. Um, so I'm just going to take this fat cap off. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of juice coming out of this. So, I mean, this is all from the fat to be honest, but it's, um, it looks pretty, pretty good so far. So, Yeah, I did say with it to myself with this that I was gonna, you know, save judgment until until I actually cook it and, and see what it's like. I'm just gonna put a bit of sauce over the top. Um, I know a lot of people will slate me for putting sauce on beef, um, but you know, it really works well to balance out the flavor with, you know, the saltiness in the rubs and everything else. So, um, you know, and, and the beefiness that comes through. So, uh, you know, Put the sauce on if you want, don't put sauce on if you don't. Um, yeah, don't judge me because I do. <laughs> um, but there we go. So, you know, I've got my brisket looking lovely like this now. So, you know, the, the, the last thing I've got to do now is just actually slice into this. So let's, um, you know, the moment of truth as it were. So. I mean that looks that looks pretty juicy to be to be fair it's um you know sort of like squishing it together kind of i can see juice running out of it and you know obviously i've trimmed all the fat off of it so it's not coming from the fat cap it's um so i'm just gonna take this first slice so, you know, you can see we've definitely got the tenderness that we want. Um, you know, it does look, there is juice in this. So let's actually give it a try. Thank you. That, that is, that's up there. That's really good. That's, Ooh. Wow. that's surprising. Yeah, I mean, you know, I got to be I got to be honest when I was trimming this up last night and I was looking at the marbling that I could see 
I was a little worried that this was going to be dry. It wasn't really, you know, it was just going to be a bit disappointing like it was, you know, like, um, like most UK briskets are that you cook. Um, but I mean, you know, this, I mean, you know, this, this brisket here has got some real flavor to it. Uh, it's got great tenderness to it. It's got good moisture. Um, you know, I mean, we, we got it from, uh, you know, Oliver over at Meat Matters. Um, you know, I kind of held off saying where I got it from in case, uh, in case it didn't turn out well. But I, I mean, seriously, these, this brisket, I paid something in the region of 10 pound a kilo. Um, so, and, you know, and they did, you know, they only charge you. So they say it's something like 70 pound for a, something in the region of six to, to seven kilo brisket. Um, the one that we had turn up was 9.1 um, and you know yes there was a lot of waste there was a lot of trimming to do but you know for a, a, I mean what is high-end beef um, and the you know the result that we've got out of this I'm I'm pretty happy with it as in you know I'm I'm really happy with it so um, yeah I mean you know very surprising very happy to be as surprised as I was uh, or as I am um, you know, it's the first time I've cooked one of these, so I'm just going to cut all the way through so I can just see what the, what it's like on both ends. You know, normally on a brisket, you always get one end that is better than the other. Um, so I'm just getting towards where it's all starting to flake off. So, um, I mean, this bit here, I mean, it's looking really juicy still. Um, so again, I'm just going to take it off, give it a try. I mean, damn, that, that, that is even better. Try that. Um, that's, that's got a, a richness, a beef flavor to it that you know, I mean, the, these are the, the, those ones. When you cook a, a Snake River Farms or something like that, and it, it's really on that day, that, that's kind of what this has come out like. Um, and, you know, this is a, you know, one of these briskets will cost me 70 pounds, plus a bit of delivery, versus an SRF, which, I mean, I think if I'm getting them well, if I'm buying them in the States, it's like $250 a pop. So, it's worth well, work. yeah, I mean, you know, the work that's gone into it is definitely worth it. Um, I would definitely cook one of these again. Uh, I'm just going to get the burn tens off. So, you know, I'm just going to get the burn tens off. I'm just going to find, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, see, it's nice. And... Yeah, I mean, I can, I can, the tenderness of it, I can just kind of squidge it. I, I could break it really easily with my fingers. So, um, you know, it just pulls apart, nice and tender. Again, it, it's really good. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, go for it. I mean, you know, this could be, uh, definitely does change my, my view on um, grass-fed UK brisket. Don't get me wrong. You know these are grow, you know grown to a really high standard. There, you know, I, I mean they they take them to a lot older than what most UK cattle is. So this one was a what was it a forty-one month old uh, Holstein, um, which you know Holstein is normally a dairy cow. So. You know, if they're able to make this as a byproduct of uh, of dairy, um, I, I mean, they should do more of it. Um, it, it is my my opinion. I mean, yeah, uh, it's it's really good. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm a bit surprised. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, on that bombshell. Um, yeah, we're we're gonna 
Uh, we're gonna cl clean up stuff here. You know, we're gonna go home. I'm uh, gonna eat a bit more of this brisket. Um, and, you know, definitely put some thoughts together around this as it's a really, really interesting piece of beef. Um, there is a lot of work that goes into it to, to get it down to the, to the right, you know, to, to, to how I need it. Um, but, you know, the, the outcome from that uh, is definitely worthwhile. So, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as always, we'll put a link in the description as well uh, for Meat Matters, so where you're able to buy this brisket from. Um, you know, if you're, if you're not shy of a bit of a work, uh, definitely give it a try. And, uh, you know, we'll leave it at that, and, you know, we'll, we'll see you again on another video.